we start singing, I want to read some scripture for you guys. It's from 1 Chronicles 16, verses 23 to 25. It says, Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. We're going to sing a song called Our God is an Awesome God. So sing along and do the hand. of Grace Kids Online. I hope you're having a good Sunday so far, and I hope you're ready to study God's Word. This morning, our lesson is going to be back in the book of Exodus, and I'm looking at Exodus chapter 15, beginning in verse 22, and our lesson will take us all the way through chapter 17, verse 7. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause this video, go grab your Bible, and I want you to read that section of, uh, of Scripture today. Chapter 15, verse 22, through chapter 17, verse 7 of the book of Exodus. Go ahead and read it to yourself or have one of your, your parents read it to you and then come back and press play on this video and we'll start our lesson. All right, well, if you're back, I'm assuming that means you've read our text this morning. 
So here's what I here's what I want you to see this morning as we as we go through our lesson. It's a very very simple truth, but it's incredibly profound. That means important and and incredible, and it's also something that we easily forget. the re- The truth that we see is that God always provides for His people. God always provides for His people, and we're going to see that in the life of this young nation Israel. So just to remind you of where we're coming from. What we saw last week is that God has proven himself once again to be the savior and protector of Israel. Last week was the story of the Red Sea when God parted the Red Sea and he allowed the Israelites to walk across the Red Sea, it says on dry ground. And then when the Egyptian army sought to follow after the Israelites to to capture them and bring them back into slavery, God caused the waters of the Red Sea to, to snap shut, destroying all the Egyptians, the entire army, said that there was not one of them left except for Pharaoh. And God proved that he was the almighty God and protector of his people. So God has proven so far in the book of Exodus that he is a savior. He saved his people. He brought them out of slavery and and bondage. And he is a protector. He protects his people when they're in danger. This week, what we're going to see is that not only is God a savior and a protector, but he's also a provider. He's also a provider. You see, the the big question that we're confronted with at the beginning of this story is how will God provide for his people? It says that they've been wandering in the wilderness of shore and they've been wandering for three days and they haven't been able to find any water. Now, this area was, was like a desert. They would have wandered through this really rocky desert and then a more traditional looking desert with big sand dunes, just big mountains of sand everywhere. The one thing they couldn't find was fresh water. And if you know anything about about being in a hot place, you know that you need water. I mean, in fact, this past week, if you went outside on any of the days, you would have been struck by, you know, the heat that was over 100 degrees. And one of the things that you would need very quickly after being outside was some, some fresh, cold water. We need water to live. And, and the people of Israel, they're they're concerned, they're becoming afraid because they can't find any water. And so it says in our text in verse 24 that the people, they grumbled against Moses. And they said, they began saying, what shall we drink? Now the word grumbling is very important. And it's a word that you're going to see repeated throughout our story. In verse 24, it says that they grumble. In chapter 2 of verse 16, it says that the people grumble. In chapter 8 of verse 16, it says that Moses will tell the people that when they grumble against him, they're actually grumbling against the Lord. This word grumbling is really important. What it, what it indicates is not just a, a concern, not, not, a, not a concern that the people have that they're bringing to the Lord and saying, Lord, we, we trust you that you'll meet this need, you'll meet this concern. No, grumbling has the idea of rebelliousness in it. It has the idea of a lack of faith, a lack of trust. You see, Israel, by grumbling to Moses, is expressing that they don't trust and they don't believe that God will provide for them. That's a pretty amazing thing, considering what he just did for them. He just, he just parted the Red Sea for them and, and delivered them from Egypt and from the army of Egypt. He, he has shown his, his power over the world by sending plagues on the nation of Egypt. And yet somehow the Israelites have been deceived into thinking that he won't provide for them. And so they grumble against Moses. Now, I think it's also important to see what Moses immediately does. Moses, in verse 25, it says, he cries out to the Lord. It says he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a log, and he says he threw the log into this this water that they had found that was bitter, which meant it it wasn't good for drinking. It, It was toxic and unhealthy. God shows Moses a log, and he throws it into the water, and it says that it makes the water sweet meaning now it's, it's good to drink, it's pleasant, it's healthy, it's clear, it's fresh. So God performs this miracle and provides fresh water for his people. But then he tells them something. He says this in verses 25 and 26. It says, The Lord made for them a statute and a rule. It, says, it means he, he gives them a rule that they're going to have to follow. It says that he tested them, saying, If you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God, and do that which is right in his eyes, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, then I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I, the Lord, am your healer. So what's God saying here? Well, what God is saying is, 
I have just tested you to see if you will obey me. You see, God put Israel in a situation where they realized that they, they would need to rely on him. They wouldn't be able to rely on themselves or their own abilities or their own intuition, their own knowledge, their own strength, their own might, their own power. He put them in a situation where they would need to trust in him. And he did that to test their faith. And in this case, Israel failed. They didn't have faith. Their, their faith was found wanting, was found insufficient. And God tells them this. He says, look, I've just tested you. And I want to I want to make something clear to you, Israel. And I think he's also speaking to us, speaking to you and me. He's saying, if you will follow my commands, if you'll hear my voice and listen and obey with a heart of faith, then I, I will not curse you. In fact, I will bless you because I am God, your healer. I desire I desire to to care for you, to provide for you. It's a simple it's a simple reality. When we will trust God and put our faith in Him. He is faithful to provide for us. He is a faithful provider. You see, Israel failed in this instance. They failed to trust the Lord. But God tells them, if you'll trust me and trust that I'll provide for you, then I will provide for you, and I will bless you, and I will not curse you. So God gives them then this command, this initial test, and now He's going to continue to test them to see if there's anything genuine about their faith. So He's, he's provided water for His people, and the next thing we see is, that not only do they grow thirsty, but they grow hungry. In verse in chapter 16, it says that they they set out from Elam and they begin to travel in the wilderness again. And in verse 2, it says the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. They said, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. So what's what's Israel's problem now? Well, now they're hungry. They're saying, you know what, Moses? We would rather be slaves in Egypt where we had food than be free in the wilderness where there's no food available, where our stomachs are grumbling, where we're hungry. They're like, Moses, what, what did you do? You just brought us out here to die of starvation? Why would you do that to us? And they grumble again, once again showing their lack of faith, a rebellious, unbelieving spirit in the in the the midst of this people. This time the Lord responds. He says to Moses in verse 4, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you. Now why does he do this? Well, I think we see a glimpse of it in verse 7. He says that in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord. Again in verse 10 he says, Behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And all the way down in verse 12 we see God's statement regarding the grumbling of his people. He says this, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. So say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So Israel grumbles. They say, God, will you provide for us? Will you provide for us? You see, even though they're, they're grumbling against Moses and Aaron, Moses is clear to tell them in verse 8 that you're grumbling. It's not against us. It's ultimately against the Lord. And then God steps in and says, I, I will provide food for my people. And I'm going to do this so that they will know that I have not abandoned them. That's why he was going to allow them to see his glory. In verse 10, it says that his glory appeared in a cloud. So Israel was given this, this glimpse of the glory of God showing that he, he was near to them, that he, he heard their grumbling, he saw their need, and then he provided for it by giving them bread and meat. Quail, which was a little bird that they could eat, and then manna, this bread from heaven. Once again, God provided for his people, even though they once again failed the test. You see, once again, Israel failed to show faith. Even though God had, had just provided for them fresh water where there was no fresh water, in the midst of their need, once again, when they find themselves in a situation where they will have to rely and trust on God, they fail the test. And yet God in his grace steps in and provides anyways. If we were to read the rest of the chapter, we would see that indeed God provides quail for them to eat and he provides bread for them to eat. He provides far more than they need and he gives them very careful instructions about how much to gather and when to gather it. And yet even, even in the midst of this provision, we see again this rebellious heart in Israel. Even though they were told that they were only meant to gather enough 
for one day, many of them would gather extra for the next day, and they would, they'd find it the next day rotten and full of worms, disobeying God's commandments. Even though they were told that, that they weren't to gather any manna on the Sabbath day, that, that on, Saturday, or on Friday, the day before the Sabbath, the day before Saturday, they would gather twice as much so they'd have enough food for Saturday for the Sabbath because they were meant to keep the Sabbath, understanding that it was holy. They weren't to do any work on it. Some people walked out on Sabbath morning looking for food obey or disobeying God's commands. Now, let's go back to the verse, the first, the first uh, or the latter part of chapter 15. What does God say to this people? He says, if you will just obey my commandments, hear my voice, give ear to my laws and my statutes. If you, if you will just do what I command you to do, I will bless you. And yet Israel repeatedly disobeys. Repeatedly they disobey his commandments. They ignore the, the rules that God gives them. And so he says through Moses to the people in verse 28 of chapter 16, he says, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? Uh, that's, that's such a good question, kids, for us to ask ourselves. How often do we disobey the commandments of God? How often do we refuse to show our faith and trust in Him in our obedience? You see, that's the way that, that true faith shows itself. It shows itself in obedience in all situations, whether it's an easy situation or whether it's a situation of testing, a situation where we are forced to rely on God. The way we show that our faith is real and genuine is through obedience. And the Israelites, they prove time and time again that they lack real faith. Kids, do you have real faith? Do you obey God's commandments? Do you honor your father and your mother by obeying them, by submitting to them? Do you obey God by not telling lies, even when you know that telling the truth might get you in trouble? Do you honor God by loving your brothers and your sisters well, by not being mean to them? Do you obey God's commandments? Do you show that you have faith? You see, if you struggle to obey God, it might be because you, you don't believe Him. You have not believed His word. You have not put your faith in Him. And so you continue to sin. You continue to rebel against Him and disobey. And just like He said to Israel, He'll bless us, when we obey Him, but if we disobey Him, then we have no promise of blessing. We have no promise of security. We have no promise of peace with God. Finally, in the verse 7 verses of chapter 17, we see a situation we've already seen twice now. The Israelites grumble because once again they are thirsty. It says that this time in verse 2, they quarreled with Moses and they say, Give us water to drink. And Moses just asked them, Why? Why do you test the Lord? Remember, God was testing Israel, but rather than responding to him in faith, they test his patience. They test his love for them by disobeying him, by rebelling against him. Time and time again they fail. And yet again we see that God provides. He, he tells Moses to walk a little ways up this little stream. It was called a wadi, which was a, like a small stream that was often dry when there wasn't any, any active rain or or um, uh, precipitation coming down. But God tells him to walk a little ways up this wadi and to, str and to strike a rock. And from this rock, God creates water. Water flows from this rock. It's a miracle. It's, a, it's an absolute miracle. And once again, God proves faithful. He proves to be a provider, even though his people were faithless and did not believe in him. Now, kids, here's... Here's the lesson for us, because we probably won't find ourselves out in a wilderness needing water or bread or quail, but we do have a need that only God can provide. Just like the Israelites had needs that only God could provide, we have a need that only God could provide. In the New Testament, in the book of John, we are told that Jesus is the bread of life. We're also to told that from Jesus flow fountains of living water. Again, bread and water, the two things that Israel needed physically, Jesus says, I am what you need spiritually. I am the thing that you need more than anything else. You see, kids, all of us need a Savior. 
because all of us are sinful by nature and sinful by choice. Not only are we born sinful, but we actively sin and so prove that we are indeed sinful. All of us rebel against God, do things that we're not supposed to do, disobey our parents, lie, get angry, say bad words, do mean things to other people. All of us are sinners. None of us can save ourselves. And we need a a Savior, someone who can save us. And God, in His mercy and grace, has provided us a Savior in Jesus Christ. Just like He was faithful to give bread and water to Israel in the wilderness, so He has been faithful to give us a Savior in His Son. The question is, will you put your faith in Jesus? Will you trust Him? Will you believe in Him? Or will you continue to act in unbelief? You see, if you'll put your faith in Jesus, then God promises you that He will bless you because you will be forgiven of your sins and you will, you will experience perfect fellowship with God. There will be peace between you and God. But if you don't believe in Jesus, then you do not have peace with God. In fact, it says that you will be accursed. Kids, this morning, I hope that you will see that Jesus is the thing that you need more than anything else in the world. You desperately need Him to save you. And all you have to do is to put your faith in Him, believe that He is Savior and Lord, and that He has died for your sins, and that when you put your faith in Him, all your sins will be forgiven. If you will do that, then God will forgive you of your sins. And He will bring you into perfect relationship with Him. So I would urge you this morning, kids, to take hold of the bread of life, the fountains of living water in Jesus Christ, and believe in Him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank You that You have given us Yourself, the thing that we needed more than anything else, a Savior. Though You did not owe us anything, though we were not deserving of it, You gave us Yourself by going to the cross and dying for our sins. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would cause every single young person listening to this video to believe in you, to call you their Savior and their Lord, to submit their lives to you in obedience as an expression of their faith in you. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you would be honored and glorified by our faith and by our obedience. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, kids, we will see you next week on another edition of Grace Kids Online. In response to what we just heard, let's sing a song called Jesus Loves Me. We're so glad you tuned in this week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.